Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at a really cool prototype uh, single-shot open bolt firearm. This is a Barnikov Green carbine, and it appears to be one of the prototypes of the Barnikov Green system. This is a rifle, well this is a little teeny carbine. This was entered as a full-length infantry rifle into uh, United States Army testing in 1872. This is the testing that would ultimately result in the adoption of the Trapdoor Springfield rifle, or more properly the Allen conversion. But in this trial there were literally dozens, there were nearly a hundred submissions from companies, private inventors, I mean you can imagine this is 1872. This is just a few years after the end of the US Civil War. Industrialization has taken the American continent by storm, and you have a ton of entrepreneurs who are looking for the next big thing. And what could be better than getting a contract for the new US Army rifle? So tons of people entered rifles. Barnikov patented this design in 1870. It's sometimes called the Barnikov Green. I don't have any data on Mr. Green, but I am presuming he was the financier uh, who supported Barnikov, who was the inventor. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, Kiel, K-I-E-L, V. Barnikov, who lived in Cornwall, New York at the time. And what he created is, in fact, a single shot, open bolt carbine. Let me show you up close. This is another example of if you are going to invent something weird, put your name on it so that people in 150 years will know exactly who made it. This is a little difficult to read, it's pretty heavily worn, but that top line says Barnikov Green Gun. Second one is K.L. Barnikov Patent, 1870. There's a date in there. February? June? Honestly, I would have to look up the patent. Uh, the patent number is, by the way, uh, 104100, was patented in 1870. And this has a US marked butt plate on it. Don't take that to mean that it was actually a US issued rifle. Uh, this was presumably built using the stock off of a surplus US issue rifle, and that's where that marking came from. All right, on to the good stuff. This thing is very simple to operate, which is one of the key elements that uh, Barnikov made a you know, tried, made light of in his patent. So you simply grab it here, cock it open, and then you put a shell manually in the chamber. This is a center fire. See the giant old firing pin hole there. This is a center fire system. Um, in trials this would have been submitted in 5070. Um, this one is 45 caliber, but I don't know exactly what cartridge. Um, it would make sense to me if it were a 44 or 45 caliber pistol cartridge, uh, but I don't know for sure. At any rate, uh, once you have it open, put the cartridge in, and then it's like an open bolt single shot gun. When you pull the trigger, this thing is going to drop under spring pressure. Like so. The breech block here is going to close. Note that this pin right here is our firing pin. As the breech block closes, these two extractor hooks are going to snap over the rim. Then you can see that this surface right here is going to push the breech fully into battery, like that. Once that is all the way in battery and down, then the last bit of travel has this lug hit the firing pin right there, push it forward, and fire the gun. Now once it's closed like this, this thing acts like a toggle lock. Well this is a toggle lock. So pressure pushing backwards is going to actually hold this in the closed position. The only way you can open it is to physically grab this and lift it upwards. So when I pull back there's a toggle pin here, I'm pulling above it, therefore I am creating uh, an upward vector of force and lifting this thing up. You can see the toggle linkage right there that connects these two pieces. So much like a Luger or Maxim, or perhaps more, more appropriately like a Winchester, this thing is toggle locked when it's closed. So once you pull the trigger, drop this whole thing and fire the cartridge, it then just sits there until you cock it open again. And what's going to happen then is those two little extractor claws are going to pull the empty case out and then drop it. Now you might be wondering, how exactly is that supposed to all work? Well there is a clever element built into the gun. If you notice right here there's a little recess cut in the side of the receiver. 
and there's a matching one on this side. And those two recesses actually interface with these two extractor claws. So when the breech block is closed here, those two claws, and you can't really see it very well, those two claws are forced inward uh, and forced over the rim of the cartridge. When it opens, as soon as those claws clear into this section, these are able to expand outward just a little bit, enough to remove pressure. Yeah, you really can't see it happening on this one. Uh, but the idea is they expand open, which releases the pressure on the cartridge, and the empty cartridge case falls out the bottom of the action. It's nice and open for exactly that purpose. By the way, here is the underside of the thing when it's actually locked up. So you can see that this lug right here locks pretty thoroughly against the breech block, and pushing back on this is not going to cause this to rise, because it's actually under the level of this toggle pin. So the harder you push, the more this stays locked. I do want to comment briefly on the sights on this, because it actually has them. However, I'm not quite sure that on this carbine you were supposed to be able to use them. When you cock the breech block open, there's a little notch in it right here, which does sort of give you visibility down the sight line, but it's not quite low enough. So this doesn't quite clear deep enough to get your sight picture. Now, maybe it could on the full length rifle, I'm not sure, not having one of those here to look at. Uh, but you have to have that breech block up when you're firing, because that's how the thing works. It's an open bolt design. When looking at how this system works, there are a number of potential problems that come to mind. Of course, one is you can't see the sights, although that may not have actually been an issue. Uh, one is, even if you can see the sights, it's going to be very hard to fire this accurately, for the same reason as all open bolt guns. There is going to be a significant delay between when you pull the trigger and when this actually fires, and the bolt slamming forward like this is going to jar the gun and probably throw your aim off. However, one of the most substantial issues that came to light in the actual trials was the difficulty of carrying this in a safe manner. So the trials rifle reportedly had a half cock notch to it, where this, this action does not. But the idea was, one way or another, you could load the thing and then put the rifle at half cock. Um, like I said, this one doesn't actually have a half cock notch. The problem was that wasn't really a very good uh, solution. It was still difficult to do, potentially unsafe apparently to do, and just generally uh, not well liked. So uh, that's the, the particular issue that I have seen documented about it in actual trials. So the trials report from the US Army testing in 1872 reveals that this, or rather this system, the full length uh, rifle that was submitted, did not in fact finish the tests. It was withdrawn, which probably means it was having significant trouble. Um, it was never re-entered any, into any contests, and to the best of my knowledge it never went anywhere else except for that trial. Which makes sense, because this is frankly, sorry Mr. Barnikov, not a very good idea. It is, however, a fascinatingly cool idea to look at, uh, because, well, really, because who would have thought? Well, Arnikov would have thought. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, got a chance to see something brand new that hopefully you've never seen before. If you'd like to see more stuff from Rock Island, you can take a look in the description text below. You'll find a link to their YouTube channel down there, as well as their Instagram page. Thanks for watching.